Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen, and in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, this is Pastor Sam, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me today on the program. This is part two of a message I began last week entitled, Let's Get Drunk and Fight. I know, I know it's a crazy title, but what it means is, let's get filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled, or literally be drunk in the Holy Ghost. So let's get drunk on the Spirit, let's get filled with the Holy Spirit, and then let's go out and fight the enemy. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, and put on the whole armor of God and stand against the enemy. So it's an exciting day. I want you to have the message in its entirety. All you have to do is call me at 804-744-8881. Again, that's 804-744-8881. And say, send me that message, and I'll send the DVD of Let's Get Drunk and Fight. Again, that's all you have to do. So let's get ready now. We're going to go together into that service where the power of God is at work, and it's already in progress. The Bible teaches that the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial outward physical evidence of speaking with other tongues is a biblical experience. It is anchored in biblical revelation. And nowhere in the scripture does it say that God will stop moving by His Spirit before Christ returns for His church. In fact, it says just the opposite. It says that there will be an intense outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that there will be a magnification of the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the last days, and we're seeing it happen. Somebody say amen. So let's get drunk, and let's get full of the Holy Ghost, and then, listen, let's fight. Who are we going to fight? One another? I don't want to fight you. Amen. It's like the guy that went into a bar. And he thought he was tough, and he walked up to the bar, and he said, I can whoop any man in this bar. And this guy, about six foot 14, walked up, pure muscle, growled at him, he said, you can't whoop me. He said, oh, okay, well, I'll just mark your name off the list. <laughs> he didn't want to fight. I don't want to fight you. It's not about you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Are you flesh and blood? How many of you know you are? If you raise your hand. Half of you don't know. Reach over and pinch those people that don't know, that didn't raise their hand. If they squeal, you are flesh and blood. So you're not my enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But well, where's the fight? We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in high places. We are engaged in spiritual warfare, and some of us don't even know who we're fighting because we're fighting each other. My wife's got some little dogs over at the house, and they're funny. They're, they're, they're good for sermon material. That's the only reason I like keep them around. And they're kind of semi-retarded. I'm serious. There's something wrong with them, the little ones. And I think that's because they're inbred. They just... They get something screwy in their head when they're, when they're little and tiny like that. And, and so what, what I've noticed about them, there's three little ones, that if something disturbs one, they can look out the window and see a squirrel. And it's like, <laughs> and the other one will get up there next to them. And, <laughs> and then the third one comes, <laughs> and they're all looking at the squirrel. And suddenly, they'll turn on each other and start biting one another. I th oh, Lord. Bunch of retard dogs up in here. It wasn't about them. They were focused on the squirrel. But then they started fighting one another. And I thought, well, that's no worse than church folk. We're supposed to be fighting the devil, and we get perturbed about something. And they think, blah, 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 blah. we're fighting one another. Your enemy is not sitting on that pew. 
Your enemy is the devil, and you need to know that. Touch somebody and say, my enemy is the devil. Not you. Not my mother-in-law. It's the devil. Now watch this. This is important. He said, we wrestle against principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Satan's kingdom is organized even if ours is not. Sometimes we get so disorganized in the way we want to do things. We want to circumvent the system. We want to, well, I'm just jockeying for position. That's, that's what the New, we, the New Testament says. It talks about how that, you know, James and John wanted to be first in the kingdom and Peter was mad about it and, and, and they got crossways with one another and Jesus had to straighten them out and tell them, if you want to be great, you got to be a servant. And so we get that way sometimes, but don't, don't make any mistake about this. Satan's kingdom is well organized. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. And some of us are fighting with little demons and, and, and struggling. And that's why it's constantly a, a, a rub with, with some little demon, some little demon. And then you need to go to the next level. Go above the devil go, or that demon. Go to that principality or that power that is above him. Go over his head. Stop messing with the little devils. Say, I ain't want to talk to you. I'm going to the number one biggie. I'm going in Jesus' name, and I'm going to stop this mess. I'm going to stop this havoc. I'm going to stop all this confusion. It's going to stop today because in the name of Jesus, I'm going above the head of every little demon that tries to torment me. And, and you defeat that level, and you don't have to worry with all this little stuff. Amen? Now watch what I'm talking about. Here's how it started. There was a, an angel by the name of Lucifer, and it means that name means son of the morning. Son of the morning. That's a beautiful name. How many of you ladies are pregnant? Anybody? There you go. Don't name your kid Lucifer, even though it's a beautiful name. You'll get a lot of flack. It means son of the morning. Who wouldn't want a beautiful name like that? Son of the morning. And he had a prestigious position in heaven. He led the host of heaven in praise and worship. Can you picture that? And God gave him this ability. Now, I say this uh, very sincerely. Some of you that have been given beautiful gifts and talents, you've got to be careful that you don't get lifted up. One of the problems that happens in church, it seems like it, it always gravitates toward musicians because they'll get up and, oh, they're running up and down the ivories and ebonies of the keyboard and playing the guitar and, and they've got the drums and the organ. and it's, Ooh, that's so beautiful. And then they get looking around and say, yeah. Yeah, that is, isn't it? And ain't nobody can do it like me. And then somebody else comes to the church. Uh, you play? Well, you'll have to play behind me. You can't, you can't take my position. You're not going to get my position. This is mine. I own it. And they get real territorial. And the devil can get in that and tear an entire church up over that. When it ought to be like, oh, let's all do it. Come on. Use your gift. Use your talent. Let's get you involved. Some of you can sing. Now, some of you can't. I've heard you. You need to ignore this, what I'm about to say, but the rest of you, you ought to be, you ought to be trying to get in the choir. You ought to be trying to get a, and not just sing a solo. I'm going to get in the choir. I want to blend with the choir. You can just about tell the harmony of the church by the harmony that's in the choir. But be careful that you don't let your, your gift get you in trouble. Because one day, Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the heights of the uh, of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And Jesus said, oh no, you won't. And he dropped, kicked him out of heaven. Boom. And he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And I give you power and authority over all the power of the enemy. But now watch this. Watch this. Before he fell, and this is how the devil works. Before he fell, he was able to persuade a third of the angels to abandon their loyalty to God and to follow Him in His treasonous rebellion. I'm going to say something going to make some of you mad. Some of you going to go, oh, your mouth's going to hang open. Don't do that. Flies will get in there. Shut it. Listen, some of you saying, uh, you know, Pastor, uh, so-and-so, he's a good preacher, and, and he's talking about going off and starting a church. Maybe I ought to go help him. Maybe you ought to. If your heart's there, maybe you ought to. But the truth is that this church would have a much more powerful witness today if it hadn't been for the fact that over 30 or 40 years, you've had a lot of people that decided they wanted to start their own ministry out of this church and peel off and go start a church somewhere. Now, you can get mad at me, say, oh, me, hallelujah, bless God, whatever you want to say, that's the truth. And you can look at, follow the results of it and see what happens. 
There, you say, you mean there shouldn't be ever a time when another church will be started out there? I didn't say that. I just say it should be done right. And a lot of times what happens, pride gets in the arrangements and people say, oh, I should be up there in that pulpit preaching or they're not giving me enough opportunities to preach and to show what God is doing in my life. And then you ingratiate yourself with the congregation and you get a few friends and you pull them out and you, you begin to polarize the congregation. Okay, you got to go with me because I need to go and, and I need to exercise the gift that God has deposited in my life. And the next thing you know, what you started goes to nothing. And the people you took with you, I'm preaching better than you letting on. The people you took with you, disheartened and disillusioned and don't ever come back to this body and maybe never go to another church and you're responsible for it. I want to tell you, it's a serious thing to say I'm a pastor. It's a serious thing to say God has called me to a place. And I take it very seriously. And I believe that God wants to do a great thing in these last days. But before or he can do it, he's got to get into our hearts so that we'll understand the enemy and begin to direct our attack against the enemy and stop all this infighting. Somebody say amen. Now, with that, I want you to see what happened. All of these angels that failed, and I don't know how many there were because I don't know how many angels were in the beginning, but the book of Revelation talks about the dragon's tail sweeping a third of the stars out of the heavens, which is symbolism uh, for the angels. So uh, these angels have uh, 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 de devoted themselves to viciously tormenting and attacking the heirs of salvation. That's where demon spirits come from. And you and I have been given authority in Jesus' name over demon spirits. Now, I don't see a demon behind every tree, but some of the things that are happening in your life come about as a result of the activity of demons. And you need to be prepared to fight the devil. Not just to defend yourself, but you need to be on the attack. Somebody say amen. I'm going to go get my kids back. I'm going to go get my stuff back. I'm going to go get my peace back. I'm going to go get my joy back. Because the devil came in and stole it. I'm not going to sit here twiddling my thumbs, waiting until I die. I'm going to get back everything the devil took from me. Devil, the blood of Jesus is against you. And see, one of the reasons we can't get it back is because we're not willing to identify the enemy. Did you know that in the Old Testament, if you could identify the thief, he had to pay double? Did you know that? That's in Scripture. The reason that Job got a double portion blessing is because in the end, he was able to identify the thief. Some of you, the devil's been stealing your money. Everything that's precious to you, the devil's tried to take it from you. But you need to identify the devil as a thief and shout, I'm taking it back. Everybody shout with me. The devil is a thief. He's been stealing from me. And I'm taking back everything he stole. Come on now, give God praise in the house. All right. Quickly, and I'm going to end this little talk, but I want to tell you a little bit about putting on the whole armor of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. How many of you got dressed this morning by yourself? Yeah, I, I can tell that gizzard. I think Mama needs to help you, though. Yeah. You got dressed in the dark, didn't you? Uh, how, how long have you been dressing yourself? When does that start? Huh? 21, somebody said. When does it start? Huh? When you're little, right? When our daughter was little, she was about four or five years old, and, and, and Donna's mom was a wonderful seamstress. She'd make these beautiful dresses, handmade, and, and, and put them on, we'd put them on Sarah, and we'd be ready to go to church, and Donna had her all dressed up just to, to the nines, you know. And she'd say, just a minute, and she'd run in her bedroom and come out, and she'd wear, she loved these little, they called them jellies, didn't they? You'd get them at Kmart. And she'd come out wearing them little jelly shoes, you know, because she had her own thing going, you know. This is, I like this. The dress was real nice, but the little jelly shoes from Kmart, that was their, her touch. So, you know, early on you start getting dressed. wonder why it is you wait for me to dress you. I mean, you've been dressing yourself a long time. Why is it you wait to come to church to put on the whole armor? 
And then I've got to say, okay, come on now. Come on, put on, the, put on the helmet of salvation. All right, now wait a minute. Hold it. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, wait a minute. Now put on the belt of truth. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Here's your shield. Don't leave without it. Well, wait a minute. Here, take the Word of God and, and don't leave without it. And, and, and then the next thing I know, you've gone and all week long we're finding shields and swords. and You left it. You didn't even put it on. You said you were, but you waited on us to get you dressed. Every morning when you get up, you ought to say, I'm putting on the whole armor of God today. Hallelujah. First thing, put on the helmet of salvation. You have got a good mind. Did you know that? The Bible says God's not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound or delivered mind. You've got a good mind. Tell somebody, say, i got a good mind. I'm going to say, i got a good mind to tell you off what i got. But you got, you got a good mind. God gave you a good mind. And he, he gave you a delivered mind or a sound mind. Stop thinking the devil's thoughts. I have watched some of you. Pastor, y'all better pray. i got a pain right up in here. I know it's cancer. My great aunt, Mildred, she got that same pain right there. Six weeks, she's dead as a doornail. I know I got it. I admit the doctor yet. In fact, I don't think I'm going to go. I don't want him to tell me that I got it. But I know I got cancer. You already gave yourself cancer because you're paying. You, it could be anything. It could be that peanut butter and, and, and onion sandwich you ate last night before you went to bed. I got to... And you start thinking the worst. You start thinking the worst about other people. Well, I don't know. They didn't say anything, but I think I know what they, they, I saw them looking at me. I know how they feel about it. They don't like me and I don't know why. And you've already figured out in your mind they don't like you because of the way they look at you. Some folks can't help the, the way they look. Amen. One woman came up to me after church one time. She said, I saw you getting, giving me them funny looks. Them Funny looks. I said, lady, you look funny when I saw you. I didn't give you your funny looks. You got nothing to do with the way you look funny. Amen. Well, I saw the way they, they, they were talking to somebody. I don't know what they said, but I think I know what they said. And so you already got it figured out. And you get, got, well, you're thinking thoughts that the devil put in your head. You need to cast them out in the name of Jesus and replace them with the truth of God. Amen. And start, oh, start thinking the thoughts of God. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So put on the helmet of salvation and then put on the breastplate of righteousness. Y'all still with me? Say amen. I'm kind of quiet. I hope you're listening this morning. But you put on the, the breastplate of salvation. What is it that folks say in church? I'm not going back there anymore. Well, why? I'll tell you what. You want to know why? I'll tell you. Hold on a minute. I'll tell you why. Because it broke my heart. What broke your heart? I don't remember. <laughs> Somebody said something or did something and just, it just, it just broke my heart. Well, you should have had on the breastplate of righteousness. Then that fiery dart would have bounced off of you. That's why you wear the breastplate. Put that on. And then, you don't. And then he said, put on the belt of truth. See, some of y'all don't even know what you believe. Oh, I'm getting mean this morning. You don't know what you believe. What do you believe about salvation? What do you believe about sanctification? What do you believe about the fullness of the Holy Spirit? What do you believe about heaven? What do you believe about hell? What do you believe about sin? What do you believe about retribution? You don't even know. How can you put on the belt of truth when you don't even know? You might say, well, I just believe I'm more spiritual than I am religious. That's just a cop out. That means I'm not willing to study the scriptures to show myself approved or work with the needs to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I'm just going to say I'm spiritual. Listen, the devil will have you out there believing all kind of crazy things. Amen. Somebody, oh, I can't go into that now. I can't say that. Some of y'all will tell me stuff that you think it's so super spiritual. Oh, I heard about something. I heard they were doing something. And I, I'm thinking, what has that got to do with anything? Oh, well, I, I just thought it was spiritual. You need to get in that book. That's why so many people get deceived because they don't know what's in the book. I can shoot back too. <laughs> so... 
Put on the belt of truth and tighten it up in the last notch. Amen. Listen, don't even just believe something because I tell you. The Bible says of the Christians in Berea, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness to mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So put on the belt of truth. Then he said, take the shield of faith. Without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Don't have faith in me. Don't have faith in your denomination. Have faith in God. Trust in God. Don't have faith in an institution. Have faith in God. Dear Lord, if ever we should have learned a lesson is that institutions fail. Amen. Some of you remember a day when you equated Americanism with Christianity. And you said, well, bless God, I'll tell you, I'm red, white, and blue for Jesus. And you thought that Jesus was a white guy with a crew cut and blue eyes. And you had in your mind that Jesus was a Republican. And you realize now that it's not about political parties, and it's not about institutions, and it's not about the government. How is it that when everything is going crazy, God can sit on His throne and say, I'm wonderful, counselor, I'm the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of peace. Why? Because the government is upon my shoulder. Amen. Let the Democrats have it. Let the Republicans have it for a while. One of these days we're going to rule and reign with Jesus. Amen. And so we get all bent out of shape because things are changing around us. But Jesus never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take the shield of faith and go forward in faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. Then he said, put on the gospel shoes and you'll be able to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power. And finally, and I'm closing with this, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The devil can't stand the Word of God. Did you know that? He can't take it. Oh, I tell you what, I told the devil the other day, I said, him, just quit him. Quit bothering me, devil. I just, just, if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> and he didn't leave me alone. And he won't because he doesn't fight fair and he's a backstabber and he wants to destroy you and you've got to take the sword of the Spirit and use it against the devil because the devil is defeated not by what you say but when you say the word of the Lord. For if the rain cometh down the snow from heaven, returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it makes give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto is in it. Some of you will say stupid stuff, like, it's not going to be cold this year in the winter time. It better get cold, or we'll have more ticks, and we know what to do with come summer. Somebody needs to use some common sense. I don't like the cold weather any more than you do. But just me saying something is not going to make it happen. God established the seasons for a reason. When you begin to say what this says, that's when I respect what you're saying. When you, begin, when you open this up and you say, with the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, I can't argue with that. When you open this up and you say, God is able to make all grace abound toward me that I always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, then I can't, that, I can't argue with that. It's time for us to begin to say what this book says over our lives. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your house shall be saved. Stop confessing that your children are going to be lost and go to hell. Stop talking about how they'll never get delivered from drug addiction and begin to say, I am believing God for household salvation. God save me. He's going to save my entire house. I'm believing God. Whatever God says, that's what you need to say. Stand with me, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, thank you for your word. And today we want to get drunk and fight and win. We're not fighting with no purpose. Our purpose is to win, to be victorious. Our purpose is to rescue the perishing and to care for the dying. There are thousands of people, Lord, that need Jesus. Many of them are watching right now. And we're going to believe you to meet the most urgent needs that exist. While you're standing right where you are, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, to please move toward the center of the room, everybody. 
Reach it, go, go toward the center. Folks in the center, stay where you are. But the rest of you, move toward the center. If you can get with somebody upstairs in the balcony, please do that because we're going to agree. I'm going to lead you in a prayer today, and I want you to pray this prayer. And when I do, when you pray this prayer, God's going to do something. And the people that are watching us by television, listening on the radio, and the people that are watching right now over live streaming, when you pray this prayer, something's going to happen. Are you ready? I want everybody to pray this prayer out loud with me right now. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And what the blood has cleansed, let the Holy Ghost empower. Fill me with your spirit and use me for your glory to defeat the enemy so that I can live in victory until you come or call for me. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. Praise God. Are you ready to fight the devil with me? I believe you are. In fact, I believe that you're equipped, empowered, and anointed to do it. And the most important thing in your life now that you are a child of God is to find the right church. I'm talking about a Bible-believing, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled church. And I want to recommend to you Victory Tabernacle. Please join us this Sunday, 10 o'clock at uh, Victory Tabernacle. We have two full hours of praise and worship, ministry from the Word, and always a time together in His presence around the altar. And then don't forget that the last Sunday in the month is our Miracle Sunday. That means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in the chapel. And I'll be praying for everyone who needs a miracle of healing or deliverance. And just a great, great time all day long on that last Sunday of the month. Then on Wednesday evening, you can find us right here at 7 o'clock in our family enrichment night service. We have something for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the boys, Missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens called Battle Cry, even a program for young adults, college and career age young people called The Vine. And I'm always teaching in the main sanctuary. At 8.30, we're walking out the door. So be sure to join us. And oh, by the way, why don't you check out Ustream Television? That means at 11 o'clock, you can watch us live on Sunday morning. Just go to our website, victorytab.org, and click on Ustream TV. While you're there, check out Victory Battle Cry Radio. It's a 24-hour internet radio station. So we have gospel teaching, preaching, and music. Uh, it's just a great, great thing for the whole family, and you can even get it on your phone so that anytime, any place, you can tune in Victory Battle Cry. Praise God. Hey, thank you for being a part of our program today. And until we're together again, just like this, around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen.